Om Namo Narayanaya, we're working our way through the Shiksapatri of the Swami Narayana sect. I think I know which sect this is. Um, I, I don't think I knew the name of it, but I think I do know the sect, and I think it still continues to the present day, and it's created for a culture that's not America. It's not European. It's an Indian culture that takes care of aesthetics and folks like this. Anyways, um, if you have information about this sect, please feel free to put it down below, and, and you know, I'd be, just be great for everyone watching this video. Every person should, according to his ability, carry on some occupation suitable to his caste and religious order. Those that live by agriculture should not allow a bull to be gelded. Provisions and money should be laid by according to circumstances and time, and those that keep cattle should store up as much hay as those animals may need for their consumption. If a man can himself attend to the proper feeding of cows and other animals with hay and water, then only he may keep them. Otherwise, he must not do so. No business in regard but to giving or receiving land or property should ever be transacted, even with a son or friend, without a written deed attested to by witnesses. When any pecuniary transactions connected with giving away a girl in marriage have to be transacted for oneself or another person, the money to be delivered over should not be settled by verbal agreement, but only by a written contract attested by witnesses. A man expenditure ought always to be in proportion to his income, otherwise it is certain that great misery will arise. Every day one should take note of one's income and expenditure in the regular business of life and write them down with one's own hand. My followers should assign a tithe of grain, money, etc., acquired by their own occupation exertions to Krishna, and the poor should give a twentieth part. The due performance of fasts, of which the eleventh day fast of the principle, should be effected according to the shastras and one's ability, for this will lead to the attainment of desired objects. Every year in the month of Shravana, one should perform or cause others to perform cheerfully the worship of Shiva with leaves of the bilva tree, etc. Neither money nor utensils nor ornaments nor clothes should be borrowed for use on festive occasions from one's own spiritual preceptor or from the temple of Krishna. While going to do homage to great Krishna, to a spiritual preparer, or to a holy man, food should not be accepted from others on the road or at places of pilgrimage, for such food takes away religious merit. The full amount of promised wages should be paid to a workman. Payment of a debt is never to be kept secret. Let no one have any dealings with wicked men. If through great distress caused by a famine, by enemies, or by the oppression of a king, any danger or destruction arises anywhere to character, wealth, or life, the wise among my followers should at once quit even their own native country, and having gone to another, let them reside there happily. Wealthy householders should perform those sacrifices in honor of Vishnu, which entail no killing of animals. Brahmins and holy men, sadhus, should be fed on festival days at sacred places of pilgrimage. They should observe the great festivals in honor of the deity in the temples and should distribute various gifts among Brahmins who are deserving objects of generosity. Kings who are my followers should govern all their subjects in accordance with the law date laid down by the Dharma Shastras and should protect them as if they were their children and should establish the observance of proper duties throughout the whole land. They should be well acquainted with the circumstances of their kingdoms, for as example, the seven agnas, that is, the duties of the sovereign, minister, ally, treasury, territory, fortresses, and army, the upper upayas, the conciliation, sowing, to sanction, bribing, and punishing, the six gunas, that is, peace, war, marching, sitting, encamped, dividing the forces, having recourse to an ally for protection, and the places of resort to which spies should be sent. They should also make themselves acquainted with the men who are skilled in legal procedure and with all the court functionarities, observing by the right signs whether any ought to be punished or not. Wives should honor their husbands as if they were gods and never offend them with improper language, though they be diseased imbecile. No communication, even though arising naturally, should be held with any other man who may be possessed of beauty, youth, and good qualities. A chaste woman should not allow her navel, thighs, or breasts to be seen by males, nor should she remain with an upper garment, nor should she look at the antics of buffoons, nor associate with an immodest woman. A wife, while her husband is absent in a foreign country, should wear neither ornaments nor fine clothes. She ought not to frequent other people's houses, and should abstain from laughing and talking with other women. We shall pause here. Um, 
in, in this very fascinating uh, guidebook. Um, and love to hear from you. Please down below. With that, I'll say Harry Krishna, Harry Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Harry Harry, Harry Rama, Harry Rama, Rama Rama, Harry Harry.